I want to take a little bit of time to talk about the reality of whether gun safety regulations work to reduce not just gun violence, but violence more generally, because the right has a lot of really concise and neat sounding talking points. I've said before, the right has the advantage on framing. George Lakoff has written about this. Uh, uh, abortion is murder, so it should be illegal. That is a really simple talking point. And the left position on abortion is not the opposite of that. It is nuanced. It is complex. And on guns, the right has guns don't kill people. People kill people. More guns would make us safer. Uh, gun free zones are the problem because only good guys follow the rules and the bad guys will bring guns into gun free zones. More guns, less crime. People will find a way to do the killing even without a gun. So banning guns or making them harder to access doesn't do anything. Now, there are actually a whole host of ways to think about this, and all of them point in one direction, which is actually gun safety rules and restrictions do work. There was a really good post on our subreddit by a user named Nostalgic Seon, and some of their ideas are in this segment. Now, one argument that's common is it doesn't matter what you make illegal. People will get it if it's a good way to kill people. Has anybody heard of a mass killing via grenade? Grenades are easy to detonate. They have a big blast radius. You don't have to be nearly as accurate as you do with a firearm. Yet there are no mass killing incidents involving grenades. Well, why not? Turns out there's really strict regulation of grenades. They're really difficult to get. Another example, M4 and AR-15 rifles are very similar, different barrel sizes. The M4 has uh, uh, some firing modes, three round burst and fully auto firing options. But all else being equal, M4s are harder to get. They're more expensive. The mass shootings are overwhelmingly AR-15s and never M4s. Wow, what a shocker. What about just in general fully automatic weapons? Fully automatic weapons would do a ton of killing in a mass shooting, but they aren't used because you need to jump through all sorts of legal hoops to get them. They're really expensive. So the laws do work. The guns that are more difficult to get and more expensive aren't used in mass shootings. So then some people will bring up, well, the real problem is handguns and individual homicides, not mass shootings and the types of firearms used within them. It's really a distraction. You can kill one person in many, many different ways, and it is difficult to stop a determined person from killing one other person. But the success of mass shootings or mass killing events is much more dictated by the firepower and the destructive nature of that firepower that's available. And if you zoom out and you look at studies across many countries, the theme, the arc is homicide rate goes down when gun restrictions are made law. But it's got to be taken seriously. It can't be just one law. There's a study published by Oxford University Press. What do we know about the association between firearm legislation and firearm related injuries? What we learn is that it usually takes a pretty major legislative overhaul. It's not just background checks alone to see significant changes. Restricting access to guns and their purchase is associated with a reduction in firearm deaths. This tells us that just passing background checks is likely to have only a very small effect. What we need is a combination of 100 percent universal background checks. Yes, restrictions on the most deadly weapons requiring permitting and licensing for guns. I'd like to see mandatory insurance policies for gun owners as well. And Elizabeth Warren is proposing a lot of this stuff, and I'll get to that a little bit later. When you look at countries like South Africa and Australia, even when you look within states in the United States that have made changes, the results are very clear. But in the end, none of this matters because on this issue, the facts don't matter. They are well funded on the pro gun side. They are well equipped to dismiss any study and to tell you that you're a bad person for wanting this stuff and you're against freedom. And in the end, in addition to these changes legislatively, there has to be a cultural change. I've been talking about this for years at this point. We need to stop being a culture where so many people want so many guns. We need to stop being a culture where so many people see guns as a tool to solve problems, be they societal, political, cultural, personal. We need to stop being a culture 
that raises so many radicals and extremists. But we also need to do all of these other things, which any other civilized country would have done if they were in our position, which countries like New Zealand so quickly did once they suffered a mass killing event like this. So the policies work, but they don't work uh, individually. They need to be a package of policies, but the culture is a big part of this. And so many other things relate to this, none of which none of which the pro gun fetishist American right wing connected to the very well funded uh, gun lobby is willing to even consider. Let me know what you think. I'm on Twitter at D Pacman. I hope you'll follow me there. I hope you'll follow the show on Twitter at David Pacman show. And I hope you'll join me this evening, 6 30 PM Eastern time for a live stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash David Pacman. If you love learning new things, you probably want to check this out. The David Pacman show today is sponsored by Skillshare, and we're giving you two entire months of free access to Skillshare. When you click the link underneath this video, Skillshare is a vibrant online learning community offering more than 25,000 video classes on just about anything you can think of. Get better at playing an instrument, learn to use Photoshop, how to edit videos. They have classes on drawing, painting, business, cooking, nutrition, personal productivity. And I'm not even really scratching the surface. I recently took a great class on introductory watercolor painting. Uh, I'm still not good, but I am learning and you can access the entire library of fun, easy to use online courses for free for two months by using the link underneath this video. Two months of learning something that's totally new to you, something you want to get better at, something you already love, or you can get ahead in your career by learning new skills that will help you at your job. I've gotten a ton out of it. Pat has taken some courses that he's found really valuable, and I think you'll love it too. Get started for free by clicking the link under this video.